Welcome to the next video. Today we're going to be looking at the neurovascular assessment of the upper limb. Clinically, it's crucial to perform this when seeing any patient with any upper limb pain, deformity or complaints. It can give a good idea as to the location of any damaged structures and also the state of the structures of the upper limb. So let's break it down into its constituent parts and take it one by one. Let's start with the vascular assessment. To perform this, you'd want to first look at the hand. You're looking for if the hand is pink and therefore well perfused. This is a marker of capillary perfusion essentially. You then want to feel for if the hand is warm and again which suggests good perfusion of the capillaries. Feeling for the radial pulse and the capillary refill time. Now the radial pulse can be felt on the palmar or front surface of the hand in line with the index finger just proximal to the wrist crease. You're feeling for whether there is good character, volume and uh, the rate as well of the radial pulse. After doing this, it's worth feeling for the capillary refill time. This is done on the tip of any of the fingers, most commonly the index finger, where pressure is applied for a second over the nail bed and then the nail bed is observed to see when the pink color of it returns, or hence when the capillaries refill. Two to three seconds is normal, and any longer could indicate pathology. Once we've done the vascular assessment of the upper limb, we now need to move on to the neurological assessment. And this centers on three nerves, which supply sensation and motor function to the hand and are the key nerves in the upper limb. These consist of the radial nerve, which supplies the, on the dorsum, that means the back of the hand, three and a half digits, the thumb, index, middle, and half of the ring finger. So a place to test the radial nerve sensation unambiguously would be in the first dorsal web space over here. This is located over here. Moving on to the ulnar nerve, this is, supplies the one and a half fingers on the dorsal aspects, so that's a little finger and half of the ring finger, as well as the one and a half fingers on the palmar aspect of the hand. And so a place to unambiguously test the ulnar nerve would be the little finger. And finally, we have the median nerve. This supplies the remaining three and a half digits on the palmar aspect or front of the hand. It's also worth noting that distal to the interphalangeal joint of the thumb on the dorsal side and distal to the um, distal interphalangeal joint of the ring, index, and middle finger, the median nerve also gives sensation. And therefore, a place to unambiguously test the median nerve will be on the palmar side, index finger over here. When testing sensation, it's important to ask the patient to compare the sensation on the injured or side to the normal side, saying that the normal side gives you a sensation of 10 out of 10 and asking them to rate how the injured side feels in these nerve territory distributions. Moving on now to motor function of the median, radial and ulnar nerve. The median nerve supplies muscles in the fleshy part at the base of the thumb. Therefore, to test the median nerve, we ask the patient to place their hands with their palm facing the ceiling and point their thumb upwards. We then ask the patient to keep it there while we try and push down the thumb. This tests one of the muscles in the thena eminence at the base of the thumb. Moving on to the ulnar nerve, we can ask the patient to make a star shaped with their hand. This is asking the dorsal interossei which are supplied by the ulnar nerve 
and abduct the fingers to act. We then ask them to hold it there while we try and push in their finger. Alternatively, we can ask the patient to clamp down on our finger, and this is testing the palma interossei, which adduct the fingers. And finally, testing the radial nerve, we'd ask the patients to keep their hands straight and straighten their fingers and push down the fingers to test extension at the metacarpophalangeal joints. Now it's important to note that actually there are lots of tests for the radial, median and ulnar nerve in the upper limb to test motor function, but it's important to have one test that you can do reproducibly um, so that a power grading can be given. So, in conclusion, it's crucial to perform neurovascular examinations and statuses of the upper limb whenever seeing patients with injuries or complaints to the upper limb. This can be broken down into a vascular assessment, a neurological assessment, which can be split further into sensory and motor. And in the upper limb, we'd want to test the median, radial and ulnar nerve functions. I hope you found that useful. If you have any further suggestions for topics you'd like me to cover, please let me know by commenting below this video or messaging on Instagram. I hope you found this useful and we'll see you on our next video. Thank you very much.